Pop Health Podcast is a public service of 24-hour home care. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pop Health Podcast. This is Gavin Ward, host of Pop Health Podcast. In today's episode, co-host Zach and I sat down with Chris Howard, Chief Executive Officer for Sharp Healthcare in San Diego, California. Now, you'll notice when you listen or watch today's show that Chris has a little bit of that Southern charm accent that he has gotten from Oklahoma, where he was when he learned of an opening down in San Diego. And he said, you know what? I want to throw my name in the hat for Sharp. And sure enough, he was selected. Little did he know, though, that early in his tenure, the pandemic would hit. So Chris shares a little bit about his experience transitioning to San Diego, how he's helping to provide the Sharp experience for his leadership team and patients during the pandemic, and how Sharp has had a lot of success as one of the largest health systems and employee employers excuse me, in San Diego, California. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Feel free to check out other episodes of Pop Health Podcast by visiting us on YouTube, our website, pophealthpodcast.com, Spotify, Stitcher, or of course, Apple Music as well. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. So, Chris, thanks so much for joining the show today. We like to kick off the shows with learning a little bit about the guest on the personal side. So, for you, would you mind sharing with our audience something about you that might surprise you on perhaps something outside of the workplace? Uh, well, happy to, uh, Gavin, Zach, and thanks for having me on the show today. Uh, pleasure to be here. And, you know, um, one thing that a lot of people don't know about me is uh, that uh, while I live in San Diego now and have been through an array of other large cities, I uh, was actually born in Muskogee, Oklahoma. So for especially an older generation, you might recall that uh, the Merle Haggard song, Oki from Muskogee. So I am now that Oki from Muskogee that you know and others will know and proud to call myself a, a, an Oki. Once an Oki, always an Oki. But more importantly, I was raised in a very small town south of Muskogee by the name of Oktaha. And Oktaha was an even smaller town, not even a city, a town, 300 people and some of the really the finest people you're ever going to meet. And so I was the farm kid that drove tractors, milked the cows, fed the chicken and pigs, fixed whatever broke. And uh, I still keep in touch with so many good friends and of course family back in that area. And oh boy, it's been a long journey from Oktaha to Oklahoma City to St. Louis, and of course now San Diego. I'm yeah. just a firm. I'm just a firm believer that you should never forget where you come from, and no matter where you are now or where you're going, keep that in mind. That's cool. So you have the true uh, kind of American tale there of growing up on the farm. So as you're growing up on the farm, Chris, what? How did you go from small town, you know, farm life to start thinking about healthcare or or management? Tell us about that grown up? Well, I, you know, when you live in Oklahoma, you uh, think about the colleges that you're going to attend. And so for most of us, it was Oklahoma State or um, OU, uh, some Tulsa, but for me, it was pretty much going to be the University of Oklahoma. Uh, my brother had attended prior, so I followed him there and uh, finished school there. And when it came time to look for jobs, I, uh, I put healthcare on the top of my list. And uh, for a very important reason, I I grew up around uh, hospitals. My mother was a nurse, a registered nurse in a trauma hospital, St. Francis in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I spent a significant amount of time there at the hospital as a kid waiting for my mom to get off her shift and usually was waiting in the emergency room waiting room when you could just literally wait in the emergency room waiting room. And so I saw a lot of what came into that hospital. And I guess the overarching theme is I became more comfortable with healthcare as a result of that. And so uh, it was a great way to be oriented to healthcare. And so when it came time to seek a career, I purposefully uh, sent resumes to hospitals uh, in search of certain positions and was very fortunate uh, that uh, one chose me. That's great. And mom, uh, I'm sure mom was proud uh, that you followed in the footsteps there. So also how much time also how much times have changed uh, being able to wait in the waiting room of an emergency department <laughs> seems like <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't a, be doing that today from, so no 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 not at all <laughs> so you spent a chunk of your life in Oklahoma uh, now you're down in San Diego and we'll get to that here in a little bit but what would you say you miss the most about your hometown which I clearly you know you're connected to or your home state well, I am still connected, but, uh, you know, you always just miss, of course, family, but you miss the people. 
Um, and kind of the same thing that uh, I was fortunate to find here in San Diego, but the people in Oklahoma and especially where in the area where I grew up are uh, warm, friendly, uh, concerned about you, uh, polite, considerate, uh, all those attributes that you look for. And uh, fortunately, I arrive here in San Diego and I'll, I'll tell you, the, the overtones are much the same. Warm, friendly people, um, accommodating, uh, inclusive, and I, I very much appreciate that about San Diego. Awesome. So, so on that on that thread, uh, I believe you said you were in St. Louis just before San Diego. Um, it was. What inspired the move to Sharp uh, and to San Diego? Well, when um, when I decided it was time to seek my what would be my third and final. CEO position. I had been a chief executive twice before while with SSM Health. And uh, I began to consider what that plan would look like. And I heard that Mike Murphy, uh, the former CEO of Sharp Healthcare, was going to retire. And I, it, it immediately became the goal. It, as I told my family and friends and, and some of whom thought I might be crazy for thinking about moving out to California and California healthcare and, and uh, an organization with the stature of Sharp. But I said, listen, Sharp is the type of organization, special organization you throw in for. Win, lose, draw, doesn't matter. You throw in for that. And uh, I threw in for it and uh, was just so fortunate that the board thought I was the right candidate for this organization. Couldn't be happier to be here uh, at this point in time. Uh, and of course, can't say enough good things about San Diego, uh, not just the people, but, uh, oh, by the way, an ocean, uh, mountains, desert, uh, and a climate that is hard to beat. But Sharp Healthcare was uh, was the goal. and so glad to be here. So this is uh, one of those stereotypical uh, questions, but did you have any hesitations or fam did your family have any hesitations about uh, moving to earthquake country? It's just something, <laughs> something that we hear so often when people move out to, to the mm. West Coast here. Uh, were there any hesitations there? So I'll tell you the truth, not one bit. When you grow up in <laughs> Oklahoma and you live in Tornado Alley, yeah, uh, you're, uh, you're used to such things and, and it just becomes a part of the world you live in. And, um, you know, no, honestly, um, uh, I've had family in the area, family up in L.A., family in Long Beach. Uh, my father lived up in Fresno before he passed. And so uh, we had visited San Diego on many occasions. And it was kind of one of those pinch you cities you'd, you'd drive through as a tourist and think, what must it be like to live here? So when when Sharp, and Sharp was the goal, but when Sharp became available and just the thought of living in San Diego was an opportunity, we were all in, all in from the very yeah. beginning and not not one bit of concern. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so when people think about Sharp, and, and we've actually uh, done quite a bit of um, talking in different episodes on the healthcare system in San Diego on, on this show, just because it's a unique uh, market, it's a unique healthcare community, um, and Sharp is one of the major players, if not the major player um, down in San Diego. But when most people think of Sharp, they think of hospitals, which obviously you have a, a network of hospitals. Um, I think what most people don't realize is that the organization uh, of Sharp uh, Healthcare and what it oversees is actually a much larger network that, that spans outside of hospitals. Can you give people kind of a, an overview of Sharp and what uh, the different networks look like and, and different connected sub organizations look like? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do so. And uh, uh, it is a wonderful organization. And to your point, it is much more than a hospital system. And frankly, that was a uh, uh, that was an interest of mine in applying for this position. I grew up uh, in integrated healthcare uh, with population health in mind. Uh, believe it or not, capitation had reached Oklahoma back in the late 80s, and some of the first managed care contracts I ever managed were capitated. And so uh, to be a part of an organization that is in the industry referred to as integrated, and in our case, fully ver vertically integrated, was a special opportunity. Um, and, you know, by vertically integrated, it, it just simply means that we have most of the components of healthcare located within our organization, um, all seamlessly connected to one another. So we're, we're uh, 
uh, integrated in the kind of way that allows us to provide comprehensive care, safer care for our patients and, and those we serve. But, uh, but the vertical nature of having a health plan that uh, coincides with the hospitals, that coincides with the medical groups, both primary care and specialty care, and then the post-acute and hospice realm, we really do have the full continuum covered. And uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of organization that I think truly is the future of healthcare. On the hospital side, we do have hospitals, as mentioned. You know, we have seven uh, full total hospitals, and uh, four of those are acute care. So here in Kearney Mesa, where our system office is, we have Sharp Memorial. Um, and then we have uh, Sharp Grossmont out in La Mesa in East County and Sharp Chula Vista uh, and Sharp Coronado. All of those are our acute care facilities. But we also have three specialty facilities. We have Sharp Mary Birch Hospital for Women and Newborns. And that's a wonderful hospital, has more deliveries than any other hospital in the state of California. Wow. We also have Sharp Mesa Vista, which is our behavioral health hospital. Sharp Healthcare is the, the largest provider of healthcare services in San Diego, but what some don't know is we're also the largest provider of behavioral health services for San Diego County, and we're proud to serve that role. And we also have the Sharp McDonald Center, which is our addiction treatment center, providing both inpatient and outpatient services. Those medical groups that help make our system what it is, uh, Sharp Reese Staley, and here in San Diego, it's a well-known medical group, locations all across uh, San Diego County, all from Chula Vista up to Del Mar, Rancho Bernardo, Kearney Mesa, all out in East County, pretty much all over the county. And this week, we just opened our latest uh, Sharp Reese Daily Clinic out in Santee. So we're very happy to have that new addition to the Sharp family. We also have Sharp Community Medical Group, which is a large IPA medical group with hundreds of yeah. providers, and they are embedded within all parts of our community. So tightly aligned with Sharp Healthcare, as is Sharp Reese Staley for capitated and population health purposes. And that truly is what makes this system great. Uh, and finally, we have Sharp Care, a smaller medical group uh, that has several locations around the, the county. We also have 27 ambulatory sites, uh, which help fulfill our, our medical mission of providing holistic care, uh, six urgent care locations, uh, wonderful foundations that help support the organization. And of course, um, one of our shining stars, Sharp Health Plan. Yeah, uh, and actually, want to ask you about Sharp Health Plan. It, it is funny though. You mentioned the different um, hospitals, and first of all, Sharp Memorial is a beautiful hospital, and Chula Vista just got a huge makeover, uh, and that's also a beautiful place. But Sharp, the Sharp Hospital on Coronado is also. You you mentioned one of those pinch me places. Uh, it's also just one of those places that you can't quite can't quite fathom that uh, that how nice the the view is and how nice the setting is uh, from that hospital uh, out there um, so the one of the interesting things you mentioned uh, you know Reese Steely and and community medical group uh, and then sharp health plan and I might be severely underestimating or underestimating this but hundreds of thousands of lives in San Diego managed by um, those different health plans um, I would like to ask you a little bit about Sharp Health Plan. You mentioned it a little bit there at the end. Can you tell us a little bit about what differentiates it from, from the other two and uh, give a little bit of an overview of Sharp Health Plan? I absolutely can. And uh, to your point on uh, the uh, 300,000 plus lives, well, that is true. We have over 300,000 fully capitated lives for which we are at full risk uh, for insurance and for health care for that population. A little less than half of those come from Sharp Health Plan. But it truly does define the type of organization that Sharp Healthcare is outside of something I'll talk about in a little bit, which is the Sharp Experience. Um, but to have a business that is fully integrated, uh, population health oriented, where we are responsible for the health of that community, of all the community we serve, but especially those Sharp Health Plan and capitated members where no matter what happens, it's on us. And uh, it, you know, I tell people around the country when they ask me about population health and capitation and whatnot, and I just simply say it changes things. It changes the paradigm of healthcare. It, it is the way in which we ultimately, I believe, will ensure everyone in this country uh, because it is the way to move the country away from fee for service, where healthcare is extremely expensive and unit based, if you will, for reimbursement to uh, pay to keep people healthy. 
and and if at all possible, keep them from having a hospitalization. So Sharp Health Plan is an incredibly important part of our family for serving that purpose. We like to say Sharp Health Plan, as we own it, is healthcare by San Diegans for San Diegans. Uh, and we're very proud of that. Uh, and we're proud of what Sharp Health Plan really is uh, as a health plan. So a few attributes of it. It's the highest rated health plan, one of the highest rated health plans in the nation. Four and a half stars out of five from NCQA. It's the highest member rated health plan in the state of California. The highest member rated health plan for personal physician and specialty physician care. It's rated four and a half out of five stars by Medicare. Uh, and its population health management program is, again, one of the most important components of our clinical quality uh, patient ratings and affordability pledge that we have here at Sharp Healthcare. So it's, it's a wonderful part of the organization, but more importantly, a vital component of how we intend to provide healthcare for San Diegans in the years to come and to hopefully help solve uh, the country's uh, need to ultimately ensure the entire population. Yeah, uh, and it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting of uh, the healthcare by San Diegans for San Diegans. If there's one thing that San Diegans love, it is San Diego, and it is the community feeling of San Diego. So I, uh, I imagine that that is part of the reason for your success uh, in in the healthcare community um, down there. Uh, well, I've certainly drank the Kool Aid. We love San Diego, so yeah. I, I, I get yeah. it. Yeah, uh, I think um, not to not to veer off topic, but one of the one of the sadder things about the the pandemic, and I, I mean this completely facetiously, I don't want to underplay the pandemic, but the Padres are good and in the playoffs, and there's no one at uh, Petco, which is one of the best baseball watching experiences uh, uh, in the country, I would say. Um, and so, and I know how much San Diegans love the Padres. And so uh, it's, it's been, uh, it's been tough to have to watch them just on TV. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to ask you about with the plan, we also noticed, uh, and I just from our research, I would imagine, I think it's a little bit uh, unique uh, about the shark direct advantage plan for CalPERS. Mm -hmm. um, can you just touch a little bit on, on that program uh, itself? Uh, I believe it's a Medicare Advantage yeah. uh, offering. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, happy to. Well, first of all, Sharp Health Plan has been serving CalPERS state and public agency employees way back since 2014. And it currently ensures uh, over 40% of CalPERS HMO membership in San Diego. So that's more than any other carrier in the region. So we're very proud of that. And to your point, beginning in 2020, January of 2021, the health plan will be the only regional carrier to offer a Medicare plan to eligible CalPERS beneficiaries. And it's a very important product for us because it truly allows us to provide continuity of care with a better experience as our active population transitions into Medicare. And that's something that we're seeing more and more of, not only here in San Diego County, but across the country as we have more and more Medicare, Medicare beneficiaries being created on a daily basis. That's great. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Gavin. Sorry. I saw that too uh, before. Uh, today's episode. My wife is a, a CalPERS. Uh, she's a you know, state employee. So, uh, Zach, I appreciate you touching on that and Chris, the explanation. It's great to have that. Uh, so, I think um, we've talked quite a bit about a lot of the ways um, that Sharp kind of differentiates itself. But um, what does Sharp kind of hang its hat on in, again, a, a healthcare market, especially in San Diego, that has some very powerful uh, players and, and some very high rated um, healthcare? Um, system there. What really differentiates Sharp um, in San Diego and and in the state? Well, I you know some of the attributes we've discussed, I think, kind of uh, kind of make a holistic list, and I I still fall behind them as being a a fully integrated, vertically integrated um, population health oriented system. I think that sets Sharp aside from many organizations, and that's not just something new. That's been a journey that Sharp has pursued for over 30 years, and uh, it's deeply embedded in our DNA, and it will continue to be uh, with me here, deeply embedded in our DNA, because I do believe that is the future. But for Sharp Healthcare, the key differentiator, without a doubt, is the Sharp experience. And you hear it talked about. But what it truly is, is it's a differentiated special experience that we provide to those we serve that sets us apart. And we like to say it's not one thing we do, it's everything we do, but that's not really accurate. Um, we strive to be the best place to work 
the best place to practice medicine, and the best place to receive care. And we're constantly asking ourselves the key question when you, and a lot of other organizations strive to do those same things, but we constantly ask ourselves, are we truly the best place to work? Are we truly the best place to practice medicine? And are we truly the best place for patients uh, to receive care? Uh, and we're extremely critical of ourselves in that regard relative to, we set very lofty goals. We're one of the few healthcare systems that all of our goals are set at top decile. So we strive for top decile results across the board, no matter what those are. And, and it's not a critical or negative challenge. It's a fun uh, journey, if you will, to try to achieve such results and, and figure out what it takes to do so. But by doing that, we provide a differentiated experience to someone who is served by any sharp caregiver or any sharp service and people talk about it all the time. Clearly not perfect, but we strive to give every individual an experience that they say, I don't see that anywhere else. And we hear that over and over and over. So that's the sharp experience in action. Uh, also another attribute that's make sharp what it is and another attribute that's going to continue to not only exist, uh, but be cultivated with me here now. That's yeah. great. Uh just a just a quick follow, follow up on that. Um, uh, was that was that uh, something that was ingrained with Sharp uh, when you came? Was that one of the, the things that uh, that that drew you uh, to Sharp, or um, what was that also an idea that you brought from previous experience? And like, how did you uh, how did you see yourself really like um, joining into that that mindset and, and leading an organization that that has that mindset? Well, that's a great question. And I've, I've always, uh, no, I did not bring it here. Uh, let, to be clear, the Sharp experience originated uh, back in 2000. Uh, Mike Murphy and other senior leaders here at Sharp Healthcare had the vision to follow the good lead from Jim Collins, good to great, take the Studer group, uh, bring them into bear and, and ask uh, all of those who utilize Sharp what they liked and what they didn't like about Sharp and what could the organization do better? And frankly, to the same thing we do today, receive significant input that uh, things could be better. And so the organization created focus groups to uh, create and enact a program that is in fact that sharp experience program that I taught about where we do have the, the key goal of being the best place to work, practice medicine, and receive care. And created all sorts of embedded systematic processes to help leadership and employees constantly engage in what it means to do that. I was a huge fan of the Sharp experience in my days at SSM. Uh, we sent teams from uh, SSM entities to San Diego to visit Sharp. Uh, I joked with Mike that, you know, you, you put everything on your website, you left it out there for us to copy. So of course we did and we tried to enact it uh, across SSM. But it's hard, it's difficult to do because it's such a cultural, uh, deeply culturally embedded trait that exists or it doesn't. And it has to be cultivated over many years. So I was thrilled when I heard Mike was gonna retire to even have the chance to be a part of an organization that in addition to being population health oriented, big fan, had this thing called the Sharp Experience that I've been a big fan of for so many years. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Gavin, go ahead. <laughs> we, Zach and I always do this to each other. I'll jump in. <laughs> uh, so good to great, the Studer Group, Hardwiring Excellence, those are things I grew up on uh, in healthcare. Um, and it's really cool to hear that Sharp uh, was part of that as well. And um, I just want to say I can definitely relate to that. And those are some good tools. Zach? Yeah. I, I was just, my last question, and I'll turn it back over to Gavin. We talked a lot about the um, community aspect of San Diego, and I really can't over over um state really what how that feels uh, down in San Diego really is different than a lot of places so how does sharp give back to the community there and contribute to the community in San Diego well it's a, it's a great question and giving back to our community has been and always will be vital to our mission last year alone we provided over 462 million in community benefit to San Diego County something we're very proud of um, this past year, we donated over 1,600 units of blood, the second largest of any group in San Diego County. Heading into the pandemic, um, we, after the Chargers left, 
Sharp stepped into that void because uh, blood donation is critical. And uh, we stepped in to fill that void, made it a key goal of ours. And we've been growing year over year. Now the pandemic has weakened that a little bit this year as it has everything else. But um, we are second, believe it or not, only to Comic-Con. And um, that's something I didn't think I would say either, but we are. And uh, so, uh, but the good thing is we're all dedicated to donating blood and, and uh, raising that bar every year. So we're very happy with that. But we also volunteer a tremendous number of hours, volunteer hours to our community through our Sharp Lens a Hand program. So last year we donated well over 5,000 hours from Sharp team members for various events across uh, San Diego County to try to give back. So those are just some ways we give back uh, and we're always looking for new ones, but uh, Sharp will always have community benefit and giving back to our community is a key goal. Thanks, Chris. That's that's some good information and uh, the community contribution is uh, definitely impressive. So you just mentioned the pandemic and while we don't want the episode to be on the pandemic, it's important to touch base on what Sharp has done. And uh, fortunately, you had been in San Diego. Hopefully, you got your feet wet a little bit before the pandemic. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about what it was like leading an organization and how you responded to COVID-19? I, I, I absolutely can. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, what I tell people is, because uh, I've been asked this question is, this is what we're built for and what we do. Um, we, we care for highly infectious disease patients all the time. Uh, and while COVID-19 is certainly a challenge above and beyond, nobody will deny that, um, and certainly bigger than anything we've seen in the past, our core structure was ready to step up and manage this challenge. And I think when you have a solid plan, highly trained individuals, and you're an organization that has always been able to readily adapt to new challenges, it's easier to stay focused uh, and focus on providing high quality, safe and efficient care to so many of our, in this case, San Diegans that have been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, we had committees that already met uh, uh, previously and on an ongoing basis uh, to manage uh, our annual influenza outbreak. And that's, that's also an infectious disease that, uh, that we've always taken seriously. So we were set up and managing for flu when COVID struck. And we just adapted all of those processes and took it straight into COVID. Uh, and so we were able to more seamlessly uh, make that transition. That's great. So sounds like, you know, you guys are well prepared. Um, I know for many of us, when the coronavirus hits, there could be a sense of panic. How did you keep your team, your staff, your patients from, from panicking? Well, it, it kind of, I think, goes back uh, to that same question, which is really, you know, how did you prepare? And what we told people from the beginning, look, we're prepared for this. Um, whatever the challenge is, we will find a way to solve what's before us. And we had a lot of challenges initially with COVID, and I can speak to some of those, but I think being highly prepared and, and helping everyone understand, while we don't know what it is at the moment, we don't know where it's going, um, but we know it's a healthcare matter. And we know we're built to provide high quality healthcare and keep people safe. And so we continue to try to convince people that it's safe to receive care. And that's one of the larger challenges now with individuals coming back into hospitals or clinics or outpatient centers. And many of our patients simply don't feel that it's safe. And so to your question, we advocate on behalf of safety and how we've made our environment safe for patients uh, to receive care, how we separate upper respiratory uh, illness patients away from other patients, just to be uh, extra cautious, and how we have all programs designed to provide safe, high quality, efficient care. And so when you get, and be transparent, you know, I, I do believe that it's important for a chief executive and for all of our key leaders and for our staff, be transparent with people. Uh, there's no need to sugarcoat the matter. It is what it is. Uh, it's a dangerous situation. It's also a manageable situation. And it is being managed in spite of what it may feel like. It is being managed. Care processes have improved dramatically since in the nine months since COVID broke. And we are having fewer deaths as a result of COVID uh, uh, infecting our population. And that's a good thing. 
we have more testing occurring now. So that's a good thing as well. So we're having more cases noted as positive, which is a great thing because we're testing more people. But our hospitalizations have held pretty steady. They were, they've increased a little bit with the schools opening up and some other openings, but it's okay. And so just understand this is under control, being held steady until we have a vaccine. Well said. One thing I learned, I hadn't heard this phrase before, but during the pandemic, um, I'm sure you've heard it and have practiced it, is leading with uncertainty. Okay. I've never heard that phrase before. And it makes sense. It sounds yeah, like- Absolutely. If there's one thing in healthcare and having now been in this business for 30 years, you don't know what the next day is gonna bring. All you can really know is how you're structured for leadership, how you're structured with your core processes, to be able to scale any challenge that comes along um, because we have many challenges that are uh, far less severe, but we have to still scale them and some at many at one time. So preparation, 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 and then deal with it with a positive, optimistic mind, knowing that there will be a better tomorrow. Not sure quite when the day will come, but we're even actually today better off than we were a few months ago in our knowledge of how to treat this disease successfully and effectively. Um, and I think that's going to bear uh, well for us moving forward. Well said. So as we get to the end of our show today, I want to invite you to maybe share a story, um, an event, something over the last six, eight months that really can touch our audience. Well, there, I, you know, there have been so many stories and, and just like other health systems and hospitals that have cared for patients that uh, in no way, shape, or form expected to contract this virus and no way, shape, or form uh, expected to pay the ultimate price for it. Several of our own employees have paid the ultimate price for caring for uh, patients and serving in an environment where we're caring for COVID patients. Um, so we know what the ultimate price feels like and we see it in the faces of our uh, patients and their family members who aren't able to visit loved ones until end of life. And we see it in the faces of patients that, like a gentleman who uh, was simply on vacation from Phoenix uh, with his family, was gonna stay in Coronado for a month and ended up staying over five weeks in the intensive care unit at Coronado because he contracted the virus while in a restaurant in, San, in uh, not San Diego, in Phoenix, made his way out here. And while they were preparing to play on the beach, he ended up fighting for his life for five weeks and he was one of the lucky ones that made it through. We see individuals, we had a, we had a boxer, a prize boxer uh, that was treated, uh, that, I mean, a physical specimen of epic proportion that was treated for, uh, with that contracted COVID. And it takes down the strongest of people without a doubt. But then we see the success stories, people that have, uh, uh, have gone on ECMO, uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation devices, those heart lung bypass machines. Uh, that now have taken on new life for treatment with COVID patients. And we've, we've given new life to patients through that technology that would not have had a chance before. And, and when you see people, and we've seen many that have walked out of our hospitals, having been there for five, six, seven, eight weeks, many of whom never were expected to survive, but something deep within inside them pulled them through. Uh, and we cherish and, and relish those moments as much as anybody when they walk out the door. But I'll, I'll tell you, one of the stories that really just grabbed me more than anything was um, a story of, uh, this is a story of, and I've got the notes here just to make sure I'm correct. Uh, this was a story of a, of a gentleman who experiences frequent housing insecurity. This is not a COVID story, uh, but it could have been. Um, and he was recognized in his local neighborhood as a pleasant man who would not lived an easy life whatsoever. And one morning, a neighbor encountered him outside her apartment complex and noted that there were no exchange of pleasantries like she experienced with him every, um, every day, even though he was homeless. Um, so she inquired about his health and he had to have it dug out of him, but he finally admitted he wasn't feeling well. He had severe abdominal pain and she became concerned because her instincts just told her this didn't look right. So she decided he needed attention and knew of course he was homeless and probably wasn't going to get it if she didn't help him. And so she loaded him up in her car, took him to Sharp Memorial um, and uh, he was diagnosed as having impending shock due to a serious medical condition. He underwent emergency surgery, removed a significant portion of his compromised bowel, uh, and thankfully recovered well, was discharged, 
But that wouldn't have been the outcome if not for that caring neighbor that took the extra time to inquire of someone unfortunate circumstances in need that many people would have stepped by and walked on. And that, that neighbor was Grace Smith, an EEG technician at Sharp Memorial. So she once again exhibited the Sharp experience, not only um, as a healthcare provider, but as a community member. And it's those kind of stories that really just elevate me every single day to want to come in and do more of this great work that we do. That is very touching and a great reminder um, about just people and how we can love. And, and it's great to hear her story and his story. So uh, we're wrapping up. Uh, for folks who may not be familiar with Sharp, Chris, or they want to learn more about Sharp, is the best thing for them just to go to like the website or? Absolutely. Go to sharp.com. You will see and have resources to gain access to everything you want. Uh, and uh, I know I do from time to time just because there's so much out there. We also uh, put forth our documentaries and uh, those will be coming out. Uh, but we provide an array of information for all of the components of Sharp and we welcome people to visit that. Uh, um, and hopefully they'll get all the information that they desire. Awesome, Chris. Well, hey, really appreciate you uh, joining the show. And folks, um, For I know we had some behind the scenes stuff and Chris has just been awesome. Uh, super gracious, funny. I know uh, today's episode is more uh, on the serious side, but he's a really great leader and welcomed me and Zach as uh, reporters and interviewers really warmly. And so Chris, uh, just really thanks for your graciousness and, uh, and kindness when I've had some faux pas. <laughs> well, thank you all. No, I listen, uh, we're all humans and believe me, I, uh, I experience new and unusual things on every single day. And I just appreciate the time to be here today. As I said, I'm proud to be uh, a San Diego now, Proud to be uh, with Sharp Healthcare. All of us waiting to see what the new normal looks like. But uh, I feel like I'm in the right place to experience it, not because of San Diego so much, but because of Sharp. It truly is the people of Sharp that make this organization great. And uh, look forward to being a part of the organization and continuing to deliver that Sharp experience uh, for those we serve for many years to come. Zach, any closing words? Just thank you. It was a great conversation. I really appreciated it. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks again, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of Pop Health Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And if you have and want to check out other episodes, visit us at pophealthpodcast.com, iTunes or Apple Music, Spotify, Stitcher, and now YouTube as well. Take care.